In the last video, we created this self latching run auxiliary and we added a run to control a extend, a run to control a retract, both solenoids, and a run to control our timer and a run to control our counter. So, in this video, we are going to add detail to control each run, each of these runs. <coughs> Let's have a look at our task again. The task says if the momentary start button is pressed and uh, the momentary stop button is not pressed, then cylinder A should extend until it reaches roller switch A1. So cylinder A should extend until it reaches roller switch A1. So in the start position, A0 is active, that roller switch, and the start button needs to be pressed. And once those two things happen, then a extend this solenoid should come on to make cylinder A extend out. So I'll write that piece of program in. So the start button is pressed, that'll turn on our run auxiliary. So we will use normally open contact from the run auxiliary along with uh, normally open contact from roller switch A0 because those are the two requirements for A to extend. And I will need to latch A extend So that it stays on for as long as I need. So what we will do is add a run below. I need a zero to appear on the other side of that run, so I'm just going to add it here. to self latch extend F2 so if A0 and the run auxiliary are active A extend coil will come on this normally open contact will close and the A extend will stay on and I will want it to go off once It reaches this roller switch. So to do that, I'll add normally closed contact for A1 switch. So that should control the A extend solenoid. The A retract solenoid needs a signal from retract needs to come on once our timer has lapsed. So it says in here there should be a three second delay before cylinder A retracts. So the three second delay is controlled by the timer. We'll go back to our program. So the timer will give a signal out on this Q value and that signal will be the trigger to get A to retract. We can do that by adding normally open contact here and linking it to the Q value from the timer. So when the, the timer has lapsed, the three seconds have lapsed, this Q value will be turned on. We can then use a normally open contact from the Q value to turn on a retract. And I will add a coil below that to latch a retract on.
it'll stay on for as long as we need. If we go back and have a look at the program again, we will want it to continue to retract until it reaches A0. And we will break that latch with A0. And that should control the a retract solenoid. The timer needs the input to the timer needs control. So I will add a normally open contact here. And if we go back and have a look at our system again, cylinder A should extend until it reaches roller switch A1. So A1 is what triggers the timer, starts the timer. If I go back to the program, A1 is what should start the timer. And that should control our timer. When A1 becomes active, the timer will start to count. After three seconds, it will turn on this Q value. And the Q value will then start the cylinder to retract. Start the cylinder retracting. <coughs> and our counter also needs a trigger. And there are a number of things that we could use to trigger the counter. If I go back to our system again, I need this whole cycle to repeat four times. I can't use A0 because that would mean, because when the cycle starts, it's sitting on switch A0. Switch A0 is active, that would mean it would have a count of one before it started its cycle. I can't use the start button because the start button only becomes active once in the entire cycle. I can't use the stop button because the stop button uh, may not become active at all. And as I say, I can't use A0 because it's already active before the program starts. So the only one that I can use is A1 or I could use the output from the timer. So I will use the output from the timer. So this normally open contact, use the Q value. So the Q value will make the counter pulse by one. And once it has done this four times, this Q value will come on. Once the Q value comes on, I will need the system to return to the finish, which is the A until it fully retracts and A0 becomes active. So to do that, I'm going to put a normally closed contact here. From control one Q. So once the counter has gotten to four, Q will become active. That will mean that this normally closed contact will open and A extend will go off. I also want to put it there because I don't want the cycle to, to run after the counter has, has reached the 4 value. We're linking this to counter one Q as well. Actually, I don't. I, I don't need it there. Here would suffice. So 
let's let's not over complicate it. way more than I expected. And let's have a look at our counter again. Our counter needs a reset also. And I'm going to use the start button as the reset because I'll, every time the start button is pressed I want the counter to start afresh at zero. And that is the detail added to our program. If we go back and have a look at our system. The moment we start button is pressed and the moment we stop button is not pressed, then cycle A should extend. That is dealt with in the first rung with our self latch. And in the second rung with the control for A extend solenoid. There should be a three second delay before cylinder A retracts. That was that is dealt with on the third rung where we control A retract and on the fourth where we control the timer. The cycle should repeat four times, that is controlled on the rung with the counter. If the stop button is pressed mid cycle, then the cylinder should retract and stop. If the start button is pressed, the shackle should start. So come back to the next video and we will build a visualization to test the system.